much time. We had a team of good specialist people, you know, nurses and doctors and whoever was needed. We went on the field, assessed the situation, got a team of volunteers in place, and then we went out into the villages to help these people, to give them psychological support, to provide them with the three essential ingredients that we identified that they needed as a prescription was food, water, and shelter and more than that they needed the psychological support that they could survive this phase but obviously the second earthquake hit there even further devastated the situation and um, we were also focusing on uh, focusing on the schools because kids had lost their schools and they, they there was a bit of a panic in the situation there so in order so that they don't become vulnerable because people and the, those kids were being prayed so we worked through local organizations over there who were also liaising with us to be able to get them a shelter and also we worked with another organization called Little Child Sisters Farm and they helped the orphans and those kids who were orphaned because many of them had died and um, the idea was to help them to provide as much as we can. And what kind of response did you get from the people out there? Beautiful, absolutely hospitable people, loving people, simple people, the poorest of the poor. You may go to their homes and they would they would feed you their own food. They will not have their own, even if, if they feed themselves. And it was absolutely hospitable. And they appreciated the work that we did and uh, and gave us a, a really, really warm welcome. And they and that's what made me go there again the second time, you see. And then hopefully I'm again going to visit there in November. So it could have been anywhere, but since this happened, and then when I went over there, it's a beautiful place. And when I looked at the devastation, when we used to go on air to get to the inaccessible area, and we would see from the horizon the helicopter, and we would say, right, wherever the vision was, we could see the villages, and we could see the beauty of it. The moment we focused on the villages, we could see destruction. All of the houses had been destroyed, and we were just wondering how did they manage the social implications and the ramification of what had happened to them. It would all dawn on to us and make us feel that we want to do something for them, and in the two visits, and that's what we focused on. And what are the main challenges that are facing you out there? Or what were the main challenges that faced you out there? The very first one was the moment we entered the airport and we had a supply of about 2,000 kilograms of medicine freely donated and, and even the plane allowed us to put, to put the supplies in. And there, was, there were people at the airport who wanted us to pay duty for it. They wouldn't allow that. And that was the very first challenge that we had to circumvent. That if we have left our families, we've come to an area where you know, we are at risk ourselves, but why won't you let us put the medicine in? So we had to forego that bureaucratic challenge to begin with and then the challenge of getting to the inaccessible areas there were helicopters uh, just just stood over there on the airport and we were just wondering why they stood there why they're not all on the air and helping those people out because the devastation and the scale of it was so massive so we had to literally go to the army go to other different organizations to get a helicopter but the only outcome was we literally had to charter them ourselves so that was a challenge in itself to get to the inaccessible areas and then to identify the needs of the people to be be with them and we sometimes you know some of the trekking that we did for four hours getting to a village was in itself a risky you know one slip and down we go into the mountains we were literally trekking in the mountains to get to the area the accessibility of it and then but but despite all of that the beauty of what we were doing was more satisfying than anything that we had to face and for the most part you were constructing homes for people out there uh, yes. Now, the second visit, the focus was to, because if they have a home, they would have their livelihood reestablished, they would have the life go back in the focus. So we could, we as a team could target in the limited period of time that we had, what can we do the best. So at the moment, the second visit was to target to get them homes. Yes, because that, the, everything else kind of fell in place along. And also schools, and also setting up medical camps to be able to address the diseases that came in as an epidemic following on and also the, the the devastation in itself caused uh, the survivors to have different injuries and now they were going through the rehabilitative phase to be part of that rehabilitation. And what happens next? Well, we continue the process and for, from our side we would like to raise funds. If there are any people who would be interested to be able to help 
on a voluntary basis that would be great i uh, kind of uh, i'm linked in with a foundation called the grm foundation but i am representing that foundation from uk so if you can contact me and my email address is khalid ali nawaz at yahoo.co.uk if you'd like to help be part of it i will be continuously going to those areas to be able to do medical camps to be able to help those children to be able to address the women's need of the children and to be part of the local community to be able to help them recover It's 10:09 on a Monday morning. Now, almost exactly three months ago, an earthquake hit Nepal, killing more than 9,000 people. With us this morning is a surgeon. He works in Leeds who went out a week after that earthquake hit. Dr. Khalid Nawaz paid for himself, good morning, good morning. to go out to Nepal to help and care for people in the most remote, remote parts of the country devastated by the tragedy. What made you go out and why did you go so quickly? Well, when I heard about the earthquake, I was contacted by a friend who was formulating a team. And he said, we need doctors and we need somebody to go there. We don't know how it's going to be a panic situation. And let's see and make a team and go there and try to help those people out. So that was the initial impetus because I wanted to help them. Yes. And uh, to be able to be part of the recovery process and to understand what they really needed. But when we went there, it was more like the poorest of the poor who were really affected over there. And uh, the the project involved we going there, supporting the people there. We went to hospitals and uh, we camped over there. And then eventually we landed up in a place called Sindhupal Chok, where we actually saw the devastation. And the idea was to provide them with food and water and shelter. That was the main focus of that thing. But the, the unique thing about our effort was that in addition to the other humanitarian relief efforts that they were going on, but we wanted to go out to the people, to actually the people that were, we couldn't reach them. So we had to hire helicopters. There wasn't much support from the government, I must say. But so we were working independently, but we were actually going against the grain to help those people to go there, to build houses for them, to support with the care that they needed. And that was on my first visit. So, and we identified a place called Yangri, and they, were, they had buried about 50 graves, and there were about 50 families. Nobody had been there, and it was an inaccessible area, and we had to literally trek there. So we identified that, and we helped those people there, supported them. They were very, very thankful. And then on my second visit, this time we had a bit more. We had been a bit more organised, and we formulated uh, what we was called a plan at that time. And then uh, we took. Uh, built 10 houses during this visit and wow. to, to apply to the logistics of getting the houses from Kathmandu onto the village, which is a distant village, not just a 40-mile periphery, it's actually a distant village up in the hills. I literally had to trek three or four miles. And one of the objectives was also to set up a medical camp and we also had another organization we worked with called Child Reach Nepal and also Little Ch Sisters Fund and they were targeting the vulnerable children that were affected because the schools had also been destroyed so the project was also to help with the schools. I mean, it's a long way from Leeds. Yeah. You're a surgeon in this city so you have one set of uh, skills and that initially took you out there but it sounds to me as if your involvement was was much broader, more humanitarian. Is it? Is it? Do you feel frustrated being back here then? Well, with just a regular, <laughs> you know, list of patients. No, you see, my, I'm, my, my field really is, yeah, I've got a surgical experience and then I also have taught medical students, so teaching as well, and then uh, also an aspect of radiology. But from that point of view, it's a, it's a more global aspect. But, but the impetus was that I had a friend and a team that I could work with. Yes. And then the, my next visit in Nepal is also focusing on the same thing as to, like, these people need help and I think I can help them and I don't necessarily have to be a doctor to be there you know just just the social but support. it helps it, it helps always helps to have a, a doctor and it's not on the front pages anymore and yet the devastation we were just talking about this last week on the breakfast show the devastation is ongoing the recovery of Nepal there were two earthquakes is still ongoing and yet it's not the forefront of people's minds is it now it's true because you see when the earthquake took place that was a devastation that took place but now when we went over there there. And I, when, when, we, when we were in air on the helicopters, anywhere that I would see, you know, the horizon, we saw valleys, beautiful valleys, right? But the moment we saw down and we focused on the houses, it was all destruction. Are you going again? 
Yes, in November. Are hopefully. you? Yes. And then we're going to focus on this village, Yangri, and we're going to build 40 more houses against the grain of all the systems and getting the, the supplies over there. Do you get any and time off? Do they allow you to not be either being a surgeon <laughs> or rebuilding the pool? That is amazing. Well, anyway, at the moment, I do have time. So, yeah. So, in, in a way, if you have that effort and if you make the effort and somehow you take time out to be able to do that, yes. It's and it's a coordinated effort, yeah. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you so very Thank much. You, Thank you, Dr. Khalid Nawaz. He's a surgeon here in Leeds. And that's what he's been doing to uh, help rebuild Nepal following those two earthquakes. Quite remarkable.